can you hire too many doctors? It's a great question. It's John with Contract Diagnostics. And there's a article that I'm reading. It's called The Race to Acquire Physicians. And I know we've talked a lot, and I'm sure you've read, about the supply-demand mismatch of physicians regarding the, the number of physicians out there, the number of patients that need their care, and the, the, the care that's growing uh, throughout the next decade. We've been researching and looking into this for a decade. This was in the first slide deck I ever gave, I think 12 years ago, uh, that I gave at KU Medical Center in Kansas City. This was the supply and demand mismatch was one of the slides that I gave, and it was significant then, and it has not gotten any better now. So as there's only so many physicians, where do they go? Who hires them? This article mentions a lot of consolidation. It mentions the fact that there's lawsuits right now um, for, quote, monopolizing the marketplace. You see organizations with three or 5,000 physicians that uh, some say are, are monopolizing the market away from other smaller employers, which hurts patient care. We've seen Amazon and its almost $4 billion acquisition of a primary care company. They are growing as fast as they can. We know that Walmart, we know that lots of other organizations and companies are bringing physicians and nurse practitioners into the fold. At the same time, physicians want to remain independent and join private practices. It's putting a crimp on private practices on hiring these physicians because Frankly, they don't have the resources, neither manpower to find the physicians and you know, interview them and bring them in to work, nor the financial capital to offer them large guarantees or signing bonuses or student loan reimbursements or even large sums for relocating their family. So it's a big challenge for a lot of organizations, medium-sized hospitals, smaller private practices, community-based systems as well. And we don't know how it's going to end. I don't know if lawsuits will go through, if uh, these folks are going to be broken up. But I do know that the SEC and the FTC are looking at uh, the consolidation of healthcare, which we all know has been going on over the past decade, and what they should do, if anything, about it. I think that all physicians listening to this episode are in a great position. I think you have many different opportunities. And of course, we always say options create options. So when you're looking around at positions, don't just interview at one, interview at a couple. Don't just talk to one recruiter, talk to a few. Don't just go on one site visit, show up at a couple different ones. Compare the equipment, compare the staff. Don't just look at the dollar amount in the compensation package. Look at the totality of the position. Do you want to be one of 5,000 or more physicians, or do you want to be one of six? Do you want to be a tight-knit group that you go to the office with um, and practice and cover whatever surgery call for the, the, the hospital, one person of six? Or do you want to be a in a large organization that, uh, that, that's, that's shifted around and updated and your boss might change and the benefit package changes and your contract's addended and sometimes you don't know who your boss is and it's hard to get things done because the organization is so large. I don't think there's a right or a wrong way. I just know that there's a difference and lots of, physician, lots of physicians have different perspectives on what they're looking for. You may want to finish your training and start in one path knowing that you can shift to another. The private practice position might be challenging to shift into a larger corporate uh, position later on just because as a private practice you'll probably get paid less. There might not be signing bonuses and relocation amounts and, and additional dollars. You might get a partnership, but then if you're offered partnership and you don't know if you want to do that or not, you maybe just spent a couple of years at a lower paying job to not want to make the investment for partnership and now you're going to shift over to a larger entity. I don't know that starting with a larger entity is the right thing for everybody either. I think at the end of the day, it's up to you to figure out what you want to do. One of the, art one of the pieces in the article was 83, I think 83, 85% of physicians were what they called employed. And I don't know if that means the others are independent contractors or partners or, or not working. I know that most physicians take jobs when they finish. They've got large medical debt and, or large student loan debt, and they need to pay that off by working and earning a good living as physicians do. So I don't know if the 80% number is one of the things that people are taking jobs, meaning they have a job somewhere and the others are part of the gig economy. They're working a couple of part-time jobs. They're working remote. They're doing locums. I don't know if they've classified those differently. The article didn't say.
But I do think whatever your frame is, if it's traveling around for a couple of years doing locums, I think that sounds wonderful. If it's joining one of these larger organizations and just settling in and getting comfortable with the real world and then pivoting in a year or two, I think that's a great idea. I think if you want to start in a private practice, I think that's wonderful as well. I think there's a lot of questions about near-term compensation, about partnership, and about potential private equity buyout that you should consider. But I don't think there's a right situation or a right answer uh, that I can give for everybody. I think it's unique and individualized to each physician. We love helping you all clarify and do due diligence on an opportunity to make sure it's the best opportunity for you and your family at this particular moment in time. And if you've got future goals that you want to accomplish, then it aligns with those goals and the things that you want to do. But I think no matter what your situation is, you should definitely have the contract looked at. So if it's a large organization, it's the same standardized contract for 5,000 people. Have it looked at. You need to know your obligations and how to get out. Smaller private practice, you need to take that into consideration and understand the risks. They might be greater than with a larger entity. You're looking at joining an academic center. I think that's wonderful, but you need to understand their, their, their metrics and how the vagueness potentially in their structure might not play in so well for what you see to be your future. So I think whatever the situation is, we're excited that the supply and demand curves have grown apart so much. Um, as a patient, of course, I want access for myself and access for my, my aging parents to great doctors. But as a business owner and as a as a as a some of that physicians look to to trust, lead them through this situation. Um, I think uh, it's a great situation for you all to be in as you transition over time into these roles. I think that having negotiating capital is very important. And I think now more than ever, physicians have negotiating capital, whether you're starting your first job, transitioning from one to the next, or whether you're just re-upping your contract and you're looking at doing a group negotiation because they pay everybody the same. And I think in those situations, the group has a bigger voice than an individual physician. So whatever your situation is, I think it's a good thing to be a physician these days, and I'm excited to help you all through the process over the next few years as we flush through this supply-demand curve mismatch. And it'll be interesting, and we will, of course, follow and write and talk about it on what happens with the monopolization of physicians and people that are, that are, that are hogging all the physicians, if you will. Again, I'm John at Contract Diagnostics, and we look forward to connecting with you all soon.